You can be seated and give God a praise. Glory, glory to God Almighty. We are never helpless. That's, that sounds good to me. It's, I mean, even when things look like there's no hope, it looks like there's, I mean, life is trying to wipe you out. You've fallen into some direction that you know were not of God. But when you get ready to turn around, God has set things up. God, bless your name, Jesus. We can come to you. Now, what I want to do today, I want to find scripture that show you that no matter what kind of problem you are in, if you are a child of God, there's always help just round the bed. Just don't give up, don't quit. Don't blame nobody else. And learn, learn to have a conviction of who you are. You'd be shocked how many things in life can take that joy from you if you allow it. You got to be have your conviction that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's got to be deep down in your spirit that not only is he the Son of God, he's King of Kings. And, and he has everything, listen, under control. I know it doesn't seem like it sometimes. But everything is right on the money. Let me ask you something. Is there, well I have to ask it this way because they're already here. Did the Bible speak of Antichrist? Yeah. Did he say that they was coming or many was already here? Many are already here. Some monk, well we don't have to call his name, but he already said he was Jesus. And you know how many other hundreds have declared that they were Jesus and thousands didn't declare that they were Jesus but they declared that they knew when he was going to come. Many people sold everything they had. Went up in the mountain, committed suicide, done all kind of crazy things because they believed the man over the word of God. God said nobody no one know the day and the hour or the hour that Jesus Christ is coming back for his children. And this guy gives you a number, a, a, a time and an hour that Jesus is coming and you're crazy enough to believe him. You know there's another word that goes past crazy. Get anybody know where it is? Yes, you're stupid. <laughs> you, when you... When you can believe man over the word of God, you are stupid. And I wonder how many times that we've done that. All right. When God's word told us something and we know his word said it, but it was just looked like that that's just a little too good to be true. Or God is in heaven, we are on earth, we're gonna have to help him out a little bit. That's one of the worst things on this earth that you can do, say. How many people believe that a delay in your life, do I want to say can be or is? I'm going to say can be. A delay in your life can be a time of fellowship with God that you otherwise probably wouldn't have gotten to. Delay sometimes, listen to these words now, Delay sometimes define whether or not you ask God what you ask God for is really what you need. All right. Amen. Delay can define it. You'll find out later on, Lord, I'm glad God didn't answer that prayer. Lord, gracious, I know that I'm glad that the thing that I thought was going to turn my life into whatever it was going to turn into didn't happen the way I had planned it to happen. Thank you, Jesus. God knows how to interrupt your plans. And he does it with such gentle action and love, saints. 
Let's look at the book of Acts, chapter 9. And I want you to pay attention to these several verses of how we are never helpless. And some of the scriptures that I may go to today, you may say, well, I don't know, Pastor Swinney. Yeah, you to study them before you throw them out the window. Amen. Because all scripture is profitable, isn't it? Amen. And it's given by whom? The inspiration of the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit is inspired to give us the word of God. And I tell you, if we were drinking, oh my goodness. It's sort of like the woman that was at the well when Jesus told her, lady, I have some water that, you, that I'm going to give you. You ain't never going to thirst no more. Y'all know what that woman said? Give me some of this water. <laughs> give, give me some of it now. And, 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 and he actually did. Because she went in the town and brought half of the town back out. And they all believed on him. Act 936 says what? Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. 37. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. <coughs> Verse 38. What happened to Tabitha? She died. She died, and she was a good woman. Okay, we, we, we're not trying to get that part into your heart. The part I want to get into your heart as we go through this thing today is to get, let you see. I don't care. I'm starting off with a big one, aren't I? That even if you die, there's a way to God to get straightened out what you didn't get straightened out before you died. Here, he brought that woman back to life. Read 37. I think, yeah, 38, I think. Which is the one you have to read? And for as much as Lydda was not to Joppa. What verse are you in? This is 38. 38. And the disciples had heard that Peter was there. Okay. They sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. I thought Peter was a, a mess. I thought Peter denied God three times. Lord, Lord, I, 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 I see right now that we're going to have to explain this thing. This man was a mess. But look who they sent for when somebody died. So God is trying to tell the church. If you don't give up, if you don't quit, let your conviction in Jesus Christ stand with his power, not yours. Okay. Yeah. If your conviction that what can outdo God, who is what's stronger than the Holy Spirit, oh, keep that inside of you. And no matter what kind of trouble or dilemma that you might be full or falling into, you're going to come up. You're going to come out springing like a, you're dancing in the street. Just don't quit. Yeah. How many people realize that there's not, no matter how gifted you may be, you will accomplish very little if you quit. You give up, I don't care how gifted you are. There was a guy from my hometown, his name was Mon Swinney, and I, I think Deacon McCain would know him, but he was, he was not a, the kind of Swinney, he was a S W I N N I E Swinney. And, but they claimed he was all relatives. This man, Mon, to me, and anybody in the whole town, state, said that he was one of the finest athletes to ever live down there. They never seen nothing like him. And you know how far he went? To the nearest liquor store. Mm. He was so afraid. If y'all get this, you're going to get something. And, and, and this was in the 50s. He was so afraid of being rejected oh, wow. of the major leagues until he wouldn't even try. The most giftedest man I've ever seen in my life. I was on a, 
about eight or ten, but we recognize athletes. And he gave it all up because he was afraid that he would get there and look at the color of his skin and he would be rejected. His conviction won nothing. He didn't have a conviction. He didn't have nothing to stand on. And this is what I believe that God wants you to understand. You're going to run into things like this. Yeah. All during your life you run into some kind of thing that wants to destroy you, hurt you, or uh, make doubt come in your life. This is, this is Satan's job. Now let's go ahead and put it on Satan. This is life. Yeah. We live in a serious kind of world. Y'all hear what I'm saying? This world is hatred, dirty, unfit, pagan. You name the mess that's in this world and you have it. But God wanna know where your convictions are. If your conviction is in Christ Jesus, then whatever is happening, you know you're gonna do what? You're gonna rise above it if you stay focused on the conviction that you have in Jesus Christ. Now, what kind of conviction do you have? Is he a dead Jesus with full of love and all of this? Is he dead? Now, come on. Now, we all say no, don't we say? Yeah. But when God can't be seen and you know he can do it and you don't allow him to do it, then what kind of God is he? He's dead to you. Woo. God, so what is your conviction? Hmm. Are you afraid that somebody gonna look at you and say, well, you tried, but you failed. Uh, That's what this guy was. He, I ain't never seen him, a, he could pitch, he could throw a baseball over 100 miles per hour. Wow. Not run anybody down there, he could hit a ball 500 feet or 600 feet, if you will. Never seen nothing like it in my entire life. They said that I, I could play with him, but I, I knew better than that. <laughs> this guy was awesome beyond awesome. And, and he just gave everything up for a bottle of liquor. Now he put it on the liquor, you know. And we all put it on the liquor, but that ain't what it was. No. His conviction was not strong enough on what he believed in of himself. He, he knew he could outplay anybody in the country, but his conviction was they still aren't going to like me. Oh, I wish y'all had heard that. Yes, sir. A lot of people turn around and don't do anything because you're afraid somebody's going to talk about you. Not like you. Man, if your conviction is in Jesus Christ, who cares what don't like you? You don't go out trying to make somebody dislike you. But if Jesus Christ is the person that you're putting your faith in, God will make your life completely beyond a losing vessel. Now when this woman died, I wonder why they didn't call the hearse or the ambulance or Start digging the hole. Boy, I wish somebody heard what I just said. Mm. They call for a man. What's the name of this message? We are never helpless. How helpless are you if you're dead? <laughs> so somebody got to know something. Someone has to believe that there's somewhere in your life. Now, I don't know about all raising from the dead today. I'm sure that they're doing it. We haven't seen it, at least I haven't. Well, I saw Willie come back to life, but that was sort of abbreviated. But I'm talking about someone die and we are having his funeral, and somebody come in and lay a hand on him, he rise up. How many of you all will rise out? <laughs> <laughs> But when I, at least here in America, I haven't found that nobody's done that. But is God able to do it? I believe that. So that, see, that's a good conviction to have. Even though you probably never seen it, 
But that's the kind of conviction that we need in our lives about our Savior. That nothing is too hard. Do 38 again. Acts 9, 38. And for as much as Lydda was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, mm -hmm. desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. <laughs> Verse 39. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping, and showing the coats and garments with Dorcas mane. Oh, wow, she that, was with them. Oh, you're gonna, you're gonna hear, hear something being said here, and it, it's gonna sound a little cruel, but you're gonna see that if you have the right conviction of Jesus Christ, don't let Satan direct your life when you know you're being led by God. Don't let nothing change what if it, God told you. Go with it. Don't worry about it if it take a year mm. or two years. What, stay with what God told you. What's the name of the message? Yeah. That's the only way it's going to happen. You have to stay with what God told you. Dr. Swinney, God ain't never told me nothing. You ain't never read the Bible. That's him talking. Amen. You don't have to always have to have a prophet. The Bible says you need a preacher to explain some things, but so you don't have to have nobody to tell you. You can read the Bible for yourself and know what God is saying. Did you finish 38? 39. Listen carefully, everybody. That women were weeping and hollering and carrying on because she was dead. Verse 40. But Peter put them all forth. How many people know that God did that one time? They were in there laughing at him, talking about, the child is dead. And they was carrying on like they loved Jesus. What did Jesus do? Put them all out. I wonder where Peter got this from. <laughs> Peter put everybody out. See, there's, there's a scripture in John. I can never remember that scripture. But the Bible said, when Jesus went among his own people, very little work of the kingdom could he do, save he healed a few sick folks. That was, that was something. That was, that's beyond the mind of the power of God can be stifled in their lives, not in his life. It can be stifled in their lives simply because they're unbelief. It's amazing how the church has gotten into the state that it's in, it's not because we're living so bad. It's because of unbelief. We're not trusting God enough to do what God asks you to do. When I started paying my tithes by looking at paying them, I couldn't do it. Doc and I could not pay our tithes back there, and I forget, in the early 70s. But we done it. Mm -hmm. I, until this day, I have never missed a week. Well, I pay it about a month now. But I never missed a week of paying my tithes. And ever since we found out the validity of following God's word in tithing, we've never been broke. Right, we've never been in debt. Y'all ain't listening to me. See, say, what's the name of the message again? Never. You're never helpless. And a lot of people are helpless because they ain't got no money. And why is it that you don't have no money? Well, one of the main ones, you could be lazy. That could be one, that could be one. And the other one is too much lust in your eyes. Everything you see, you, you're trying to figure out a way, how can you get it? You need to learn to listen to God with all your heart. Many times I saw things that I wanted, but we couldn't afford it without struggling. You all remember the time, I think we was on the retreat, fellas, when I was teaching on what is debt. I guess y'all, it's been so long since we've been on a retreat. I guess you can't remember. But a lot of people thought that if you owe somebody a bill, that's debt. No, no, not if you can pay it. 
Debt is a bill that you can pay. And that comes from a loss. Okay, that can be sometimes sickness, could have done it, or, or somebody in the family just messed up your life or something like that. But usually, when you're broke, it's because of loss. Take a look and see how much stuff you got that you didn't need. And if we take out the time and study what the Lord is doing in our lives, I can assure you, you are not helpless in nothing. The thoughts that come to your mind, you're not even helpless to them. And I once thought that since we can't stop thoughts, we sometimes become helpless to them. No! Not when you trust God. The whole thing boils down to where is your faith? And it's amazing that Jesus said these words right here. When I do come, will I find faith on earth? That's powerful. That is some kind of powerful right there. And now Jesus wouldn't have made that statement if it were not prevalent. Amen? All right? <clears throat> How many people know that prayer, okay, okay. I'm gonna to have to add something to that, but let me say what I wanna say first, and then I'll see if we need to add something. Listen to me now. What is prayer? Prayer, I'm sure that you're saying in your heart, is talking to God. That you're correct. And listening to God, you're correct. But my friend, do you wanna really know what prayer really is? Prayer is your ability to, under, to try to understand God's timing. If you don't understand God's timing, you will think that the prayer you prayed six months ago is deleted now. If you don't understand God's timing. When you, we may go there in a few minutes, I don't know, but when Lazarus died, and uh, they came to Jesus, uh, Mary and Martha, two people that was very knowledgeable of Jesus Christ. What's the name of the message, saints? What, did, what was the first word they told Jesus? If. If you had been here. In other words, we done lost our brother. <laughs> He's gone. And they'd say, if you would have been here, Jesus. But let's go back before we got to that. When they brought the word to Jesus that Lazarus was dead, Jesus jumped on his horse and went to Lazarus. No, he took his time and waited two more days. I wonder what was Martha and Mary thinking when they know he had the word. Good God Almighty. They know that Jesus had heard that, they, that the Lazarus was dead. Because the guys had already come back and told Mary and Martha that we told Jesus, but how many people know that the devil always get in something? We told him, but he didn't even get up off his stool. We told him, but he's still in wherever he was. I can't think of the town. But he's still there. He hadn't even started this way yet. Where do you think they got that from? If. If you were to come when... Uh, the people told you, now y'all got to hear all of this thing. <clears throat> I, I preached this to you before, but let's make sure that you hear all of this, every bit of it. When they told Jesus, what was the reason, boy, this is big, this is big, that Jesus didn't come, because didn't the Bible say Lazarus was who? <clears throat> It was the one whom Jesus loved. Why would Jesus wait all this much time when he could have jumped right up and gotten there? Jesus don't ever do, God the Holy Spirit never does anything unless it has purpose. Now listen, under the, the, the law, of death. If you die, 
Your spirit don't get up and leave you till after the third day. Y'all ain't getting it. That's why Jesus waited how many days? Four days. He waited four days so that when he raised that boy from the dead, they won't say, the, the, the critics and all the people will say, well, uh, he won't dead no way. His spirit was still in him, but he waited till the fourth day. Even though no one came and told Mary and Martha, and God didn't get too upset with them, you can see right here, right now, that we're never helpless. We always have a God that is ready to do the impossible in your life. I think God loves to do that. I believe that if, it's, if, if that is a term that turns somebody on, I believe that turned God on, God on when he showed you that he can do something that nobody can't do, else on earth can do. Why did God wait? <clears throat> I mean, hold up the, the children that came out of Egypt. Why were they standing on the banks? Why didn't God open up the Red Sea before they saw Pharaoh's coming? Nobody get it. No, nobody get it. <clears throat> God waited until they saw Pharaoh. And then he opened up the Red Sea. Why does God do that? He wants you to see that you are never helpless if you put your faith in me. Yeah. Love it. Trust me. I, I know say sometimes, and I and I, I, I have convictions on this, it, it seems hard. But it isn't. The Bible said that God's way was what? Easy and his burden was like, but he said something else, didn't he? You got to take my yoke, my word upon yourself and learn of me. So Mary and Martha got upset with laughing about Jesus a little bit. If you'd have been here, our brother wouldn't have died. Why, why did they say that? Because they know they had been, that was the, the, the law of that day. You, they, it was wrong, but they declared nobody was dead fully for, until after the third day. You know, it's something about three days. But it, God, Jesus made sure that it was the fourth day. Why? To let them know they are never without help. I am the God of the earth, under the earth, and above the earth. Put your trust in me. I like Psalms 27, I believe it's yeah. verse 4, what Paul David said, wait on the Lord. Yes. And then again, I say, wait, wait, <clears throat> let him have his way. Say so that's one of the hardest things for a, an intelligent Christian to do. Now, why would I say intelligent? Because intelligency can ruin you when you think that's what's going to deliver you instead of God. Amen. Nothing wrong with being intelligent. Nothing wrong with being smart. It's all, all the good. But you better regulate that thing. Good. Gracious son of mercy. Read that 38th verse again. And for as much as Lydda was not to Joppa. Okay. <clears throat> and the disciples had heard that Peter was there. <clears throat> they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Okay. Hey, y'all notice? Y'all see something? Don't wait, Peter. If you wait too long, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. But Peter went on and came anyway. Go ahead. 39. <clears throat> then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping, and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. That's the way they used to do at funerals at my hometown. Oh, you never seen such screaming and hollering and crying and, and, and stuff going on. And when we went to Wakes, it was like you was in a haunted house. You know, I'll tell you something, saints. If that mind don't whip your rear end, you ain't got
got one. You know, you know I, I, I remember when I was a boy, we used to have a graveyard. Deacon McCain, is, uh, my, uh, my brothers would tell you, it was a church was called Ellaby Grove Baptist Church. And it was a good church. We, we all thought it was a good church. But I remember that whenever I would hang out a little bit and had to walk home by myself, you had to walk through that graveyard. And you know what you would do? Because you don't want nobody to know that you're scared. You go through that. <laughs> Many times I've done that. Once I stepped away from the grave, oh, no. I'm telling you. I mean, say you can psych yourself into some crazy stuff. Because I, I knew that the whistling was going to keep me straight from ghosts. Won't no ghost going to hit me because I ain't scared. Man, it's, if one leaf would have failed. I, I come to that graveyard many times whistling. Because that, that, say that's not the truth. It is not the truth. And you don't want to live there. Can you say amen? amen. You want to have the, your convictions right. My conviction was in my what? My whistle. Now supposedly my, I'd have a dry lip and a dry tongue. <laughs> we got to stay away from those kind of things. Because what's the name of this title? Never You're never helpless. Never helpless. Everybody can go on and he put them forth. Stop that verse. And showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made. They were screaming and hollering and, and moaning. While she was with them. Mm -hmm. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed. And turning him to the body said, mm -hmm. Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. Verse 41. And he gave her his hand. Mm -hmm. and lifted her up. Mm -hmm. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. Saints, please, let's don't get too excited about delay. Don't worry about it. If you know that God is in it with you, continue to serve God. Continue to give him the glory in everything while you are waiting. Now, say when we say wait, usually a lot of people think about what? Time. No, no, let's go talk about hours and minutes and days. We're talking about peace and joy. That's when you're waiting is you can still have your peace. You still have your joy because of Jesus, not because the trouble isn't there. The trouble is there. But where is your conviction? It's your conviction in Jesus Christ. You know what went on in Calvary. Don't let it bug you. I know you got to learn this. You have to get there. But I advise you in this era that's just about to hit, you better, better, I mean, you better learn how to trust God. It's going to be woeful on this earth, saints. Because the Bible says so, not because some devil is, is tearing things up. Because God knew that once he had this thing over to man, man was going to what? Tear it up, destroy it, abuse it, and everything else. How many times, brothers and sisters, have God blessed you with something? Or you were simply blessed with something and you didn't you start abusing it until you didn't have nothing left. God wants you to learn what from that? A lesson. Learn lessons in everything. Now I want to go back to prayer. What is prayer? And, and that's big, say, I mean, that is really big. Prayer is to understand God's timing. Okay, Dr. Sweeney, how can I understand God's timing? You will not try to hurry God. You know that what you petitioned to God for is coming to pass. So therefore, you're not going to get into a rut. You're not going to get in a hurry. You're not going to allow nothing to take away what God has already promised you. Abraham said the nicest word about that I ever heard. He said, if God, uh, 
promise, isn't he able to bring it to pass? Yes. 